Hi everyone, it's Julie and today I'm going to be talking about selling your short stories. There are a few obvious reasons why you might want to start selling short stories. Getting your work out there, making money, getting a publication credit for your writing resume, but it's also sort of a training ground for authors who want to publish novels, for learning to do your research on legitimate markets, and it's also a nice thing to have a publishing success on your query letter if you're looking for an agent. If you've decided you want to start sending your short stories out, you may be confused about how to approach that process. Um, but first of all, no, you don't need an agent to submit short stories. Most agents don't represent short stories or short story collections anyway. And then you also generally don't need to have permission from an editor to send a short story in. You don't need to query beforehand. And uh, you also generally do not need to pay any kind of submission fee, although contests can sometimes be an exception to that, and those are usually legitimate. With so many magazines moving to online publications these days, it's not really practical anymore to restrict yourself to only submitting to magazines you can actually find in the bookstore and uh, look through to see which ones are available on the actual shelf. So many of them are online these days. So if you're looking for one that can be a good home for your work, uh, one option is to try that first. If there are magazines that you subscribe to or you like to pick up at the bookstore, you can certainly look inside of them and see, you know, um, there will be right on the inside page usually, there will be some instructions on who you want to approach for uh, sending your work in or uh, approaching for submissions, and usually that will be expanded upon if you go to a certain website on their main page on their, uh, their internet presence so they'll give you submission instructions there. As for the online magazines, they will almost always have a very clear submission section that will give you everything that you need about how to submit your work specifically to them. However, most of the time when I get this question, it's from people who only know a few publishers of short fiction, and they would like to research what else is out there. And for those folks, yes, there are some easier ways to find out who is accepting what. There are several utilities out there that organize information about short fiction markets, but I'm just going to talk about one of them today because it's the one that I use the most, and it is called the Submission Grinder. The Grinder is free to use with or without an account, and not only does it let you research your short fiction markets, but if you make an account, you can actually track your submissions. And you can look up statistics on different markets acceptance and re uh, rejection ratios, and you can find out their usual response times. So it's a great tool for pretty much everything that you need to be organized and informed while you're sending your work out. Now, I promise I don't work for anyone at the Submission Grinder, but I've just found it personally useful in my own submissions. So I just want to show you like a little bit about how to use it and what benefits it has. Um, please keep in mind, though, that since this video features a website and is made at a specific time, then you know this site may change and update and things might not look exactly how I show them to be as the site evolves over, over time, so just keep that in mind when you're following my tutorial. I'm going to go over three features with you. One, finding a market. Two, tracking your submissions. And three, understanding the data. First of all, the Grinder website is thegrinder.diabolicalplots.com. Let's say you haven't decided if you want an account yet, and you go to the Grinder just looking to search its databases for appropriate markets. On the front page, you'll see some choices, and the first one is search. You have the option of looking up a specific market by name or just choosing to go to a more advanced search screen. The advanced search gives you this. Genre is a drop-down list for if you only want to view markets that publish the type of story you've written. Let's pick fantasy for our sample search. There's also a story subject, which will let you narrow the search to very specific subjects, but I recommend leaving this unspecified for most searches because it narrows the results quite a lot. Next is word count. This is very important because many markets have very strict word counts and you want to weed out markets that wouldn't take your story. Let's say we've written a 4,000 word short story. Always round your word count. Submission type lets you pick from electronic or postal, so that's self-explanatory, but you'll get all results if you don't select anything for this. 
Market qualification is a little confusing for beginners too, but just so you know, there are some more famous and more established markets that have certain awards and recognitions. And if you only want to be published in, say, an SFWA recognized market, meaning sales to this market would qualify you to apply for membership in Science Fiction Writers of America, you can check this. I recommend not worrying about it if you've never published before. Then these checkboxes allow you to identify special permissions if you want to. If your story has appeared online or been published anywhere before, and you only want to see markets that would be okay with that, check the Accepts Reprint box. You'll want to check Accepts Simultaneous Submissions if you have a piece you want to be considered by multiple markets at the same time, and Accepts Multiple Pieces lets you send more than one to this particular market at the same time. Story style refers to how your story is written or what mood it carries, and I recommend leaving this blank at first too unless you're getting a ton of results and you want to narrow it down to the closest matches first. Story length isn't really necessary to specify because you have a place for your word count, but these are the broad categories you can choose. Flash fiction is usually a thousand words or less, novels are 40,000 words and up, novellas are 17,500 words to 40,000 words. Novelettes are 7,500 words up to 17,500 words, and short stories are 1,000 to 7,500 words. Most of the short story markets are going to be in this sweet spot here. If you have a short story longer than 7,500 words, your options drop off for many publications, though some will still consider that a short story. Now for minimum pay scale. The default is any, meaning if you leave this alone, a lot of your results will be markets that do not pay at all, and your only benefit is exposure and publication credit. Whichever option you select will give you a list of results with your choice being the lowest pay possibility, meaning some of your resulting markets might pay higher. As of this recording, pro means that the market pays at least 5 cents per word. Semi-pro means that the market pays less than pro, but at least 1 cent per word. Token means that the market pays, but less than one cent per word. And in my experience, they may pay in credit or access to something or contributors' copies of the magazine or possibly just a flat fee. And non-paying means the market pays nothing. Let's say you want to shoot for at least semi-pro payment for this particular sample search. And then, if you want to specify the maximum amount of time you'd wait for a response, you can put it in the max average response time box. I've never used this and don't find it to be practical. And then these two boxes down here allow you to filter your results to only show you anthologies or contests if you're not interested in submitting to regular magazines. And uh, this exclusions option will let you avoid having certain types of publications appear in your list, like if they're closed or charge a fee. Some of the other options are only available to you if you are logged in as a member and have pieces with data attached to them that the site can process for you. So here's our search. Let's see what we get when we hit the search button. Look at all these markets. 54 places that publish what I write and pay at least something. Okay, let's see what these things mean. Each link in this column will take you to an entry about that publication in the grinder. These here are codes for genre, F means fantasy, and this column shows that they accept stories around 4,000 words, since that's the code for short story. And then here we have whether the market is pro or semi-pro, notice it's not showing token or non-paying because we told it not to. Let's pick a famous pro market and see what its entry looks like. Okay, so here it shows you what qualifications it has, and a little editor statement on what type of stuff they like to accept. Here they show that they only accept science fiction and fantasy, and here are the lengths they publish and what category of payment they offer, and some specifics about how to submit. No, you can't send them reprints or multiple submissions or simultaneous submissions, but yes, you can submit either through electronic means or the postal service. There's stuff about their market response data below, but I'm going to go into that in the next section. Always click on their website next to figure out how and whether to submit. Many publications either have their own submission form or they'll give you an email address and an editor's name to send your work to. See, here it's on the front page. Always read their submission guidelines and find out what specific instructions they might have for how they want you to prepare the manuscript. Some have very strict rules about cover sheets, headers, formatting, and what file format to submit in. It's basically an auto-reject if you fail to follow the rules sometimes, especially for bigger magazines that just don't have time for people who won't read. 
Online submissions that use a form sometimes have a required sign up for the service, and you should do this if they ask you to. There are a few widely used submission services, and you'll probably find a lot of magazines using Submittable. You should fill out what they ask you to, and always remember to attach your file. There's almost always a space for a cover letter, and I'm not going to go into proper cover letter instructions here, but usually the publication will have a statement of some kind to tell you what they want in a cover letter. In general, though, if you have no instruction, just address the named editor of the magazine or the editors in general. Uh, give the title and word count of your piece, list your previous publications or relevant experience, and thank them for their consideration. Some have really strict rules about how many publications you should name. So make sure you pay attention and prune it for relevance if they have rules about this. Okay, so back to the grinder. If you want to do some research first and you're just keeping a list of your best bets on your own in a spreadsheet or something, that's fine. But if you do decide to join the service with a free account, there are a ton of other things you can do to track your submissions all within the site. You can flag your favorite markets and get notifications when they open or close for submissions, or you can attach custom searches to your multiple pieces. Let's go to part two, tracking your submissions. Sign up is super easy, and I recommend giving it a shot. This brag question mark box is kind of cool because if you check it off, they'll shout out your name on the front page if you get an acceptance. Of course, they're mostly rejections, in which case they don't attach anybody's name to it, but the recent stats do give people some concept of what's going on in the submissions world right now. Once you have an account and you're logged in, a new option appears on the top, My Dashboard. Dashboard contains options to ma manage your submissions, manage your pieces, and manage your profile. Your profile is just the usual account info with listings of your favorite markets and ignored markets. I usually hit ignore on a publication if I find out they only accept work from people in countries or demographics I'm not part of, or if I don't like something they've declared in their editorial statement. You can add a publication to your favorites by going to its grinder profile and choosing Add to Favorites, and then you'll get to keep it in your list of possibilities for later. The most important links are for managing your pieces and managing your submissions. Obviously, if you've never used the site before, you have no submissions to manage, so let's see about adding a piece to this site. You are not uploading your work to this site, so don't worry about that. You're just assigning all your pieces a genre and word count and holding a place for them in your submissions. As you can see, I have a lot of pieces already in here, either already sold or on submission or retired. A little code in the submissions column shows how many places the piece is currently out to, how many submissions you've made for it in the last 12 months, and how many times you've sent it out ever. Check it out, I have a piece that's been rejected more than 20 times and I'm still sending it out. And then I have a couple that got accepted very quickly, which is why they aren't out right now. If I want to, I can show this list with the accepted pieces removed, so they don't distract me if I'm trying to decide who to submit stuff to. Hmm, I really need to send this one out again. I'm rewriting this one, so it's not ready to go out. And these two... Yeah, they're never gonna sell, and I think there's a good reason for that. Oh well, let's add a piece! Give it a title. Tell the system if it's fiction, nonfiction, or poetry, and then pick a length based on those stats I gave you earlier. Less than 1K, it's flash, 1K to 7,500 is a short story, etc. Give us the word count rounded and pick a genre. There are other choices, but drop-down choices don't even exist for some genres. If you want to fill in any notes or special information for your own use, you can. Then hit Add Piece. Now our new piece is in our system. If we ever want to change its stats, like if its word count changes or we want to add notes, we can just choose update. But the other cool thing is that we can just hit run a search to find out who might want to receive this story. Remember that if you don't pick a pay scale, a lot of the results will be non-paying markets. Let's say we find a magazine we like and we've already looked through their submission guidelines and submitted a story. How do we track it here? Well, we hit Log Submission on the magazine's grinder entry. Then we say when it happened, enter a date if we got an email acknowledgement or other notification that the story was received, and tell the site what type of submission it was, probably electronic. Then, after you hit Report, the site will tell you that your data has been logged and asks if you want to go look at your submissions. Now, if you get a rejection, you can come back here and say when it happened, explain whether you got a form rejection or a personal one, and report that. 
Some people use the notes box to paste their rejection letters. If you report it, the system thanks you for the data and takes you right to a screen where you can run a search to send the story to its next potential home. It really helps cut down on slumping after getting rejected. Or, alternately, if you get an acceptance, you can open post acceptance fields to keep track of whether you got paid and how much, when you signed the pub contract, when it actually ran, and how long they have it exclusively for if you care about stuff like that. If you do intend to sell work as a reprint after it's been published somewhere else, you need to keep track of stuff like this, because many publications have rules about exclusivity periods. Those should be stated on each publication's site in their submission guidelines, as well as in any contract you sign. If you click My Dashboard, you can see some nice breakdowns of what your submissions look like, which you can modify to see certain interesting things about money stats, yearly submission stats, and which markets you've hit how many times. You can also keep track of the messier situations through Manage Submissions menu. Most of your submissions will either be rejected by form or personal letter, pending response, or accepted, but sometimes you'll get a letter stating that your piece is being held for further consideration, for which you could change its status to pending shortlisted if you wanted to, or you might get asked to rewrite and resubmit something and want to report that. You might also face a situation where you aren't getting a reply and it's past the usual consideration period, so you might send a query as per site instructions and sort it into the pending queried section. Yeah, they're probably not going to answer me. If you don't check any boxes, it will just show you every submission you've made, with your most recent ones at the bottom. If you just want to know about a particular story's submission history, you can choose a specific piece and see where you've sent it and if it's out anywhere. If you want to see your history with a certain publication, you can do that too. Now let's check out how you can understand the data and use it to your advantage. The Grinder collects the submission statistics of its users and makes charts of user-submitted experiences so you can understand how often they accept, how they tend to reject, and how long it takes them to do those things. An extremely popular pro-paying publication like Asimov's Science Fiction will have a chart that looks like this, mostly rejections with the majority of them being very quick turnovers, and tiny little green acceptances that always take a little longer. You can also see it broken down in text above with about how many monthly submissions they're getting, how many they reject in a percentage, and how often the authors report their rejection letters as personalized. I think this is overreported in most markets. Many writers think their letters aren't forms when they are. The View Recent Responses from this market link allows you to see real specifics of how many days it took and what the result was, though they don't tell you who it was unless it was an acceptance and the author gave permission to brag when signing up. A magazine that pays semi-pro rates, like for instance this one, Kaleidotrope, will have a much less intimidating response chart, though they will generally still reject most of what they receive if they're a paying magazine. This says they have accepted less than 10% of what they've received, and remember that's just what's been reported to the grinder, but that's a big difference from the less than 1% you might see at a place like Asimov. On each grinder entry, you can also see your submission history with them if you have one. And if you have a pending submission somewhere, you can see yourself plotted on the chart as a cute little purple dot, letting you know how long you might expect to wait. And wait. And wait. <sighs> Keep in mind that in utilities like the Grinder, acceptances are probably overrepresented, as people tend to report their rejections less reliably, and also sometimes people stop tracking their submissions so you might see the data suggesting a market never replies to some portion of its submitting authors even if it might have done so and the author just never reported it. You can use all this knowledge to help you figure out the best way to get published. Keep in mind that you do want the places you submit to be picky enough that they reject most of what they receive. If you get published in a place that accepts most of their submissions, you should probably conclude that they are not discerning editors. 
you will see this primarily in non-paying markets, which is not to say that non-paying markets are not worth submitting to across the board, but editors get a lot pickier about quality if they had to pay for a piece. So try to remember that you should strive to place your work with markets that demonstrate a commitment to quality. So that concludes the grinder tour, but I just want to finish up by telling you what happens if you get an acceptance. Um, basically, the editor will generally reply to you and say something like, I would like to publish this, or they say, I'd like to accept your story, and you're usually expected to respond to that with some form of acceptance of their offer of publication. So after you thank them and accept, usually they'll give you some kind of comments on small edits or changes that they might want you to make to the manuscript. Even though this is an accepted story, they'll usually want to make small changes, maybe formatting or maybe some very small story-related changes. And uh, you can exchange the document however many times that takes. Generally, also, there will be a contract involved. You should sign the contract and return it to them, and also they'll usually discuss at this point how they'll be paying you. Usually these days it's PayPal. They'll usually be good about telling you when and where your piece will be released to, but sometimes it'll be accepted for an issue of the magazine that's way in advance, so you might have to wait until then to get your contract or to be paid sometimes. There's a lot of variation, but you generally should expect a contract, especially if there's any money involved. Beyond that, just pay attention to what rights you sold to them, and don't violate them by putting your story up somewhere else if you're not allowed to, or selling it as a reprint in a way that violates your contract. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Uh, for any of you authors out there who might be submitting short fiction right now, the best of luck to you, and I'll see you next time.